Welcome to E Sikshana. I will continue the fourth, uh, fourth model. Uh, last class, I end with uh, this one uh, hazardous waste, how uh, it is uh, okay, underground uh, disposal. Okay. Uh, this is all the hazardous drums, we can see the drums pack with the uh, okay, with the safety measures. Okay. It is uh, inside the ground, okay, uh, it is uh, dumped, okay, here, okay underground now okay here yes, safety measures are taken any leachate water movement should not be passed to the ground water okay water movement any uh, this toxic water or uh, radioactive substance or anything should not move to the ground water proper measures are taken and monitoring of the uh, water ground water every time they will test the water okay it is contaminated or anything they will test the water, regular checkup of the water, ground water, is uh, this uh, any radioactivity or any hazardous uh, water, the waste uh, material moves to the ground water, okay. Uh, this is uh, packed with the, uh, this one, of soils, okay, layers and uh, here uh, this uh, vegetation also they have made, okay, any moment, uh, moment of the hazardous waste should not move to the atmosphere also okay uh, impermeable cap also they have done with the layer okay movement should not be it should not move to the atmosphere okay this is the process of uh, underground uh, okay dispose of uh, hazardous waste we have to take care uh, before uh, underground disposal okay all this packing all leachate movement a drum with the pack, uh, okay, it should not uh, any leakage or anything, they will, okay, uh, dump inside the ground, okay, all the measure, testing the water regularly, okay, and uh, it should not move to the ground water, uh, soil, uh, how the soil and everything we have to test at hazardous waste is disposed under the ground, very, very important, uh, dispose the ground, okay. This see effect of hazardous waste. This uh, hazardous waste, uh, okay, its effects on health very important. Okay, health problem. Okay, this is uh, causes health problem if properly it is not managed. Okay, proper management is not there. Okay, it causes lot of health problems. Okay, like uh, inhalation okay and uh, skin absorption okay uh, puncture wound uh, dizziness headache nausea uh, cancer this is one of the very danger by this uh, cancer will come by this radioactivity uh, this one race okay disability okay and uh, death or born with the handicap okay all these things uh, this is very very important okay keep in the mind uh, the management of the hazardous waste okay it depend on the duration of other expose okay it should not move to the atmosphere or ground water we have to take care okay it effect on health okay hazardous causes death okay so many diseases major is the cancer it may cause death okay disability everything these are the so many headaches, okay, nausea, permanent effect include cancer, everything it will come, this effect the health, okay. This is the major uh, hazardous waste may cause uh, effect on the body, okay. We have to take care, okay, disposal or uh, treating or management of the hazardous waste. Otherwise, all people will uh, get cancer or it may be death or uh, born, uh, born with handicap, uh, all these problems will occur. So, we have to take a major, uh, okay, proper action on uh, disposal and uh, uh, this one uh, treatment, everything on the hazardous waste. Then it goes to the safety. If the proper safety is not taken, okay, who are uh, working day by day for you that, okay safety is not taken there is a problem for the okay handling facility okay if proper safety has to taken okay who are working there knowing the proper safety
procedure are personally involved in the clean up and day by day hazardous waste handling activity who are working in uh, hazardous waste management they have to take proper safety uh, this one full uh, with uh, all uh, uh, jackets and uh, gumboots and gloves helmets everything a separate uh, safety measure is that for who are handling the hazardous waste if they uh, do not take the this uh, proper safety they may get the cancer or diseases okay that's uh, they have given second point safety is the very very important okay knowing the proper safety okay uh, only skilled laborers okay skilled uh, uh, laborers they have to take their own safety uh, for the uh, while working the hazardous waste okay for uh, transportation also for uh, collection also for the disposal also they have to take personally their safety okay wearing uh, jackets wearing gumboots and uh, wearing uh, all uh, this one gloves uh, uh, goggles and helmets everything proper safety has to take them second uh, this one. okay first one is a health problem okay second one is a proper safety taken who are handling hazardous waste activity workers day by day workers okay they have to take property ca if a proper uh, management is not there okay proper management is not there okay uh, the addition of the creating hazardous waste they catches the fire okay fire uh, explosion okay uh, it may be uh, burn, catches the fire some uh, okay they may ca causes okay property damage okay forest may catch fire if properly did not uh, if you did not manage the hazardous waste okay it may catches a uh, fire okay and uh, uh, explosion take place okay this is the by the flame and uh, flying uh, smokes okay all lot of uh, this is the damage the private and public properties physical mostly like to result from the fire and uh, explosion of hazardous waste site where we are dumping where the site is properly uh, did not manage properly they may catch us a fire explosion or uh, uh, the forest will burn okay fire catching the fire this is the very very important okay uh the uh, proper protection has to take okay uh, otherwise it damage the environment not only environment uh, property public and private property okay it catches a fire flame will develop okay smoke is developed okay uh, so uh, we have most oftenly fire and result to okay uh, remedial activities such as accidentally mixing okay Uh, incompatible uh, content of drums okay drums should be inside what i told uh, this last class uh, about the drum okay here see here drum drum should be proper uh, uh, pack should be done otherwise explosion take place okay fire catches okay this proper uh, drum coverage should be done okay all these uh, matters okay uh, safety and uh, this also property okay accidentally mixing with the this one uh, okay it catches fire immediately it catches fire explosion take place okay this one safety last one uh, environment okay if it uh, properly uh, if we did not manage properly okay air water land environment okay number of hazardous waste causes major problem risk to human health okay not only human animal plant everything this this is very very important environment it uh, hazardous waste if it uh, did not uh, manage properly okay it causes effect on air water land environment and uh, number of hazardous waste in addition to environmental sequences uh, of the improper handling of hazardous waste consequences uh, of uh, improper handling of hazardous waste there may be almost associated with a risk of human health death like place cancers that not only human animal also it causes problem number of hazardous waste okay so it's good the environment okay
uh, this technology this video is uh, taken from a youtube resource uh, thanks to youtube i will uh, display the uh, video thank you drained oil and fuel filters used oil and fuel filters that have been draining throughout the day must be placed in a container and stored closed when not adding filters generally your hazardous waste transporter can provide you with containers. The containers must be labeled with two things, the words drained used oil and fuel filters and the date that you place the first filter in the container. You can purchase labels or make your own as long as both things are included. Used oil filters must be disposed within one year from the accumulation start date, even if the container is not completely full. Used filters must be picked up by a California registered hazardous waste transporter and hauled under a bill of lading. The bill of lading needs to include the names, addresses, and phone numbers of your business, the transporter, and the facility your containers are being shipped to, as well as the number of containers being shipped and the date of shipment. You are required to keep copies of the shipping documents at your business for at least three years. Universal Waste Universal waste is a group of hazardous waste generated by a wide variety of people and businesses. This type of waste is more common and poses a lower risk to people and the environment. Therefore, it is allowed to be managed in a less strict manner, but should never be disposed of in the trash. Universal waste includes items like non-empty aerosol cans, non-rechargeable and rechargeable batteries such as alkaline, lithium ion, and nickel metal hydride sodium vapor and neon lamps, lamps that contain mercury vapor, such as fluorescent and high-intensity discharge, mercury-containing waste like thermostats, thermometers, light switches, and gauges, consumer electronic devices such as TVs, computers, monitors, radios, cell phones, and most other items with circuit boards. You are not required to hire a registered hazardous waste transporter to haul your universal waste. However, if you do not manage it as universal waste, it must be managed as a hazardous waste. When managing waste as universal waste, you must ship the waste to an authorized universal waste disposal facility. If it's not an electronic device, store the waste in a box, bucket, drum, or other container. Repackage broken items in a container to prevent the release of hazardous substances. Label your containers and storage units as universal waste and include your business name, address, the date you started storing the waste. Universal waste must be disposed of within one year of the start date. You should transfer universal waste on a bill of lading and are required to keep copies of the shipping documents at your business for at least three years. Empty containers. Empty containers that held a pourable hazardous material must be drained until there is not a continuous stream of material when you turn the container upside down. If the container used to store non-pourable material, you must remove any residue by scraping or chipping. Metal containers, five gallons or less, can be sent for scrap metal, reconditioning, remanufacturing, or disposed of in the trash. However, metal containers larger than five gallons in size must be sent for scrap metal reconditioning, or remanufacturing. Keep in mind that you can return all containers to the vendor for reuse or refilled with compatible material. For aerosol cans, if emptied of content and pressure, they can be disposed to the trash. Empty containers greater than five gallons that are stored on site must be marked with the word empty and the date when they were emptied. Labels can be purchased or you can create your own. You must manage all empty containers that held hazardous material within one year. To properly dispose of empty containers, use a bill of lading or hazardous waste manifest indicating the date, number of containers, name, address, and phone number of your business, the transporter, and the destination facility. Automotive lead acid batteries. Automotive batteries used in cars, trucks, forklifts, and other work vehicles contain lead, acid, and other heavy metals, and therefore must be managed as hazardous waste if not recycled. You should not dismantle batteries or remove hazardous materials from them. If a battery has a cracked case or missing cap, place it in a plastic bag or container to prevent leakage before shipping.
You should store batteries upright over a non-reactive surface to prevent the release of hazardous substances to the environment. Keep note, batteries must be recycled within one year. Used automotive batteries can be transported using a bill of lading or a hazardous waste manifest. Both documents must include the names, addresses, and phone numbers of your business, the transporter, and the facility that they are being shipped to. The documents must also include the number of batteries being shipped and the date of shipment. You are required to keep copies of the shipping documents at your business for at least three years. Collection and transfer containers. Containers used to collect and transfer hazardous waste to a labeled and closed hazardous waste storage container have different hazardous waste requirements. These types of containers may include oil caddies, drain pans, open top buckets, wet dry vacuums, or trays. You may leave these containers uncovered during operation. However, all collection and transfer containers must be emptied by the end of the day. All of these types of hazardous waste containers must be labeled with the words hazardous waste, your facility business name, the name of the substance being stored. Instead of the date, write the words empty daily. Container closure. Containers holding hazardous waste must be kept closed when you are not actively adding waste to them. When storing solid hazardous waste in boxes, totes, or roll-up bins, you must keep the containers closed or covered. Liquid hazardous waste must be stored in containers that are securely closed to prevent spills, mixing of incompatibles, and to minimize the release of vapors. There are different types of lids to make a container easy to open for adding waste but also secure, such as open top drums with a ring closure lid, bolt ring to keep the lid secure, closed top drums with bung openings, keep screw caps installed and tightened, Latch top drums keep latch closed at all times. Funnels need to be removed when not in use and the container securely closed. Funnels with self-closing lids that can be latched meet requirements and are acceptable. Buckets need to be sealed with a proper fitting lid. Hazardous waste labeling. Containers with ignitable, corrosive, toxic, or reactive waste must be managed as hazardous waste. This would include containers that store waste oil, waste coolant, cleaning solvents, printing inks, waste fuel, waste paint, photo silver fix, dry cleaning solvents, acids, caustics, poisons, pesticides, and oxidizers. Portable containers or containers less than 110 gallons in size must be labeled with the following information. The words hazardous waste, your facility's name and address, contents, physical state, liquid or solid, and hazard category, flammable, reactive, corrosive, toxic. You can purchase or make your own labels. Stationary hazardous waste containers larger than 100 gallons, including tanks, only require the words hazardous waste and the content. The accumulation start date, or the date when you first add waste to the container, must be on all hazardous waste containers. There is no required size, color, or type for the labels or markings. For hazardous waste containers not transported off-site, you can permanently label them with paint or stencil. Hazardous waste storage. Hazardous waste containers must be maintained in good condition and handled and stored to prevent leaks or damage. You should store containers in a secured area to protect from vehicle traffic and weather. Secondary containment is recommended. The floor of the storage area must be impermeable. For example, concrete, asphalt, or an epoxy sealant. You must store ignitable waste 50 feet from the property line. Incompatible waste should be kept separate through the use of dikes, berms, walls, or by keeping the waste in different containment areas. Remember to leave enough aisle space to easily access the containers in case of an emergency. Satellite accumulation. In order to apply satellite accumulation at your facility, all of the following is required. A satellite container must be near the waste generation process and under control of the operator. A maximum of 55 gallons can be accumulated in one area. However, it is okay to have more than one satellite accumulation area. Only one container for each waste type can be used in each satellite accumulation area. The container must be labeled or marked with hazardous waste labeling requirements. Once the container is full, 
the date when it becomes full must be added to the label. The container must be transferred to a 90-day storage area within three days of being full. When the container is transferred to the storage area, the date of the transfer must be added to the label. Satellite accumulation containers must be disposed of within one year from the accumulation start date. Excluded recyclable material. Definition. Waste being reused on site or sent off site for direct use as an ingredient in the production of material may qualify as a recyclable material rather than a hazardous waste. You must label recyclable or reusable material with the words excluded recyclable material and the date you began adding material to the container. Labels can be made or purchased. At least 75% of the material must be reused or recycled within the calendar year from when generated or dated. If used on site, you need to keep a log with the date and volume of when the material is used. Transportation documents or the bill of lading must include shipper, location, and contact information on where the material is being sent for recycling if shipping off site. If the volume of reused or recycled material on site or off site is greater than 220 pounds or 27 gallons per month, then you must submit a recyclable material report form to Coupa by July 1st of even number years for the previous two calendar years. For example, a recyclable material report would be due July 1st, 2014 for reporting the time frame between January 1st, 2012 through December 31st, 2012. Uh, now we will start uh, construction uh, based uh, last part of uh, fourth model. Okay, uh, sources of uh, construction waste. You can see the different uh, sources: uh, man-made sources, public work construction, uh, building maintenance, uh, building construction work, building uh, okay demolition and uh, renovation work. Okay, lot of uh, things are there. It may be man-made public construction and. Uh, Okay, construction, demolish work, earthquake, flood, and uh, this one, tsunami, natural made. These are all okay. It may be aggregate, okay, concrete, uh, brick, stone, uh, gypsum, wood, glass, ferrous, non-ferrous material, plastic, uh, broken uh, aspe uh, and railway basket, proper asbestos, excavated soil gravel, rock, other are the sources of uh, construction waste. These are the sources okay, of the construction waste by the public work construction or uh, okay, maintenance or building construction work and renovation demolition work. We will get the, this one, uh, all these sources from the construction waste. Okay? These are the sources from the construction waste, what I told here. Okay? One by one, See, you can uh, see first one wood and plant uh, materials, okay, concrete, second one from uh, what I told, gravel aggregate and stone rocks, masonry and rubble, okay, metal ferrous and non-ferrous, wood, plastic, glass, door and window, okay, and uh, aspirated flooring, okay, gypsum board, okay, carpet and pad, okay, cardboard and paper, okay, plumbing fixtures, okay, lighting fixtures, okay, these are all the sources, mainly we will get the sources, okay, wood, plastic, glass in a construction, okay, construction waste, rocks, okay, woody and plant materials, okay, and, and uh, aspect uh, roofing, okay, and, uh, and uh, gypsum board, car carpet and pad, okay, cardboard, paper, plumbing fixture, lighting fixtures. These are the uh, construction waste, uh, sources of the construction waste, okay, or demolition or construction or renovation. That time we will get the different types of the waste, okay. See, you can see the uh, here image in that uh, you can see different types of construction waste after demolition or after renovation while construction different waste are dumped here. Okay? Uh, the management of this is uh, very very important nowadays construction waste 
okay it will uh, effect on atmosphere and it will affect the environment okay so proper management government has taken lot of uh, uh, this one okay for the construction who are doing the construction work or demolition work they have to manage this waste very very important okay see how the here you can see the construction waste that is dumped okay it may be wood it may be anything they are dumped the construction uh, waste here uh, see here this is the one of the you can see the image how they dumped the construction waste okay proper management government rules as uh, taken 2016 amendment proper management has to be done manage has to be done this should not throw the construction waste here and there proper management see here a lot of uh, iron lot of it is the uh, building is demolished another building is construction is going on okay side way they are demolished waste proper management has to be done for the construction waste okay this is very very important this is the image shows the dumping it should not be done proper management has to be done uh, only they will give the permission for the construction otherwise they won't give the permission for the construction okay see collection of the construction waste this is also very important they will uh, okay broker jcb will broker all the waste and this one any demolition or uh, renovation lot of waste are there okay how it is collected okay container okay big size and heavy waste okay and uh, convenient uh, throw waste big capacity metal container used for uh, this one okay metal open container large waste this are the small container i will show the image okay big capacity container is also there okay and uh, large size uh, heavy container convenient throw waste okay metal open big size and heavy metal these are the types of the okay collection of the construction waste okay metal open containers big size and heavy okay throw waste okay capacity of the metal container open container used for the large heavy waste okay container with the height convenient for the throwing the waste of the construction site can be handled to cubic meter waste occupy little space durable and light okay these are different types of the container used here okay different types of the container okay you can see the images see this is the one of the image in the construction this is the container all the wastes are uh, dumped here okay in the this one when the construction is going on this uh, government has to, uh, government uh, rules these types of containers should be used you cannot throw the waste here and there okay in the proper container you have to okay this is the one type of the container it is used uh, for uh, in a construction site in a big uh, multi story building construction is going on this type of construction uh, this one container in that all the waste are okay next one see this type of container also use different colors are made for the wood metal or anything this type of container we can use in a construction site that the government rule this type of container it made up of a, okay wood or anything this type of compartment one compartment second third fourth compartment okay they will put the construction waste this is also second type of the process first type of big container what i shown here okay My container second one is the okay three four container with the okay this type of a container for the collection of the waste okay and this type of container uh, plastic container or it uh, fiber containers different colors this type also uh, preferred okay for the collection of the waste here construction is going on here waste collection okay this type of container okay uh, there she is used for the collection of the waste this type of a container for the collection different types see here three types over one is uh, this one second one is this type collection of the construction waste 
third one is this one okay type collection of the construction waste okay different near the site this type of uh, uh, waste container are kept okay different colors they will put the waste according to their color they are named here which are the types of the waste okay and this type also okay plastic uh, bags also you bigger bags in a small small construction in a house or anything are this type of bags also used okay big bag okay, plastic bags also used for the construction okay it may be plastic bags used for the site uh, for the construction demolish work or small types small sites and this type of uh, collections also used uh treatment of the construction waste third one a uh, collection or treatment of the construction waste okay very very important treatment treatment of the construction waste is very very important how to treat manual separation screening picking soil reduction and landfilling very very important first construction and demolish waste first manual separation by manually it is separated segregated then screening is done okay convey picking okay size reduction by mechanical separation plus uh, size reduction plus mechanical separation okay uh, landfilling okay recovered item okay some useful items are taken materials are taken out okay they uh, manually they will separate if the iron rod is there they are taken out if the aggregate and uh, they are uh, separating you can show i will show the video how it is separated okay and the wood is there uh, it may be used for uh, burning purpose or anything okay anything uh, any metal uh, this is the boxes or anything is there it can be recycled okay nowadays uh, for the road uh, making the road okay embankment everything this uh, waste also used construction waste properly used in that places okay many are recycled okay waste are recycled this is very very important okay only waste which could not used further only we will put for the landfill okay recovered item on landfill two okay which cannot be used okay only we will put for the landfill otherwise it is recovered it is recovered okay this is a very very important treatment process of the construction waste okay construction demolish waste manual separation is done while in the site manually one one separate separate box we will keep screening plus conveying picking okay from that which as the item is needed we will take that okay size reduction and mechanical separation uh, in a mechanical separation or size reduction is done recovered item uh, uh, one side and life at one side okay this is the process of uh, treatment of the construction waste okay see here uh, how this is uh, done first one bar screening is done here okay screening large gravels are fine aggregate crushing is done magnetic separation for the iron air classifier for paper for a plastic okay see uh, secondary treatment for the soil okay bar screening is done gravel crushing okay fine aggregate will come okay magnetic ferrous metal will come okay for this is secondary this one okay plastic material air classifier these are the different types of uh, uh, gravels and uh, fine aggregate okay different type plastic uh, paper plastic ferrous material all this will taken here secondary screening okay large gravel bar screening soil okay magnetic separation okay fine aggregate crushing everything will be uh, done in the treatment okay uh, how it is uh, see you can see the separation okay if iron content is there magnetic separation okay plastic and paper air clarify okay and uh, fine aggregate crushing okay large gravels from here okay secondary screening okay bar screening and secondary this type of uh, this one separation is done in the this one okay see here how it is done uh, disposal of the 
construction means one side aggregate, one side metals, okay, one side wood and other things are separated, okay, disposal of the construction waste, how it is separated, okay, disposal, see the disposal of the construction waste, different, different type construction waste. I acknowledge this video is uh, taken from uh, YouTube channel. Uh, uh, thanks to YouTube, I will display the video. Building site, road construction or demolition waste. Wherever there is construction and renovation, waste is generated. Over half of all waste in Germany is produced by construction. Natural resources such as sand or gravel are becoming scarce. This makes it increasingly important to extract new raw materials from old building materials and integrate them back into the economic cycle. People in Germany are used to working mainly with natural stones, with sand, gravel made of natural materials. Recycling is still an unknown area for many. We need more planners, architects and builders to deal with this topic. That's why architects at the Werner Sorbeck Group have been researching recycling and reutilization of scarce resources for many years. They built UMAR, the module of a residential building in Switzerland, completely from recycled building materials. Stones from mineral building rubble or walls from shredded beverage cartons. Everything is finally screwed together without the use of glue. Our main goal was top quality construction, not despite the use of these cyclables, but because we build with these special materials. The difficulty, up to now only about 5% of the recycled building rubble is considered to be comparable in quality with the source materials. Therefore they are mostly reused merely as backfill, insulation material or in road construction. However, architects want to achieve sustainable use of materials in order to recycle them again and again. Yeah. The lower the hurdles are, the better I can dismantle something, the better these materials are integrated into the planning and the better the whole thing will establish itself. Up to now, however, recycled materials have hardly been used in construction, also due to a lack of political regulations. Every year, 220 million tonnes of construction and demolition waste are generated in Germany. About one-third of this is recycled, but only about 2% is reused. Unfortunately, the preferred disposal routes in Germany are still backfilling in pits, quarries and open-cast mines as well as landfilling. However, the landfills are overcrowded and increasingly closed, and so recycling companies are also reaching their limits. Andreas Thaler, for example, can only hand over small amounts of its recycling material for reuse, even though it is reprocessed and certified according to water management and construction quality characteristics. Politicians are interested in keeping the material cycle closed, but this topic simply hasn't taken hold in the local administrative authorities, in cities or in civil engineering offices. There's still a lot of catching up to do and probably also a need for further information. EFAT is therefore asking the Federal Environment Agency in Dessau what measures could increase the market demand for recycled building materials. This can the demand must initially come from the public sector and it should also be rewarded, for example, by the Federal Sustainable Building Rating System. There, the use of recycled materials should be positively evaluated, and it is. The DGMB does the same for private builders and that should be an incentive too. As a final resort, one could also consider the necessity of a tax on primary raw materials. In addition, advancements in recycling technology should increase the qualitative recycling of construction waste. This is precisely where Dr. Palzer and his team at the Institute of Applied Construction Research in Weimar come in. For the first time, the researchers are producing light granulates from construction waste for use in the light concrete industry. Until now, the fine fraction had to be landfilled because there is no recycling for it. But we process it further. 
This fine aggregate is ground once more and then granulated with the addition of a blowing agent. And these granules are then blown in a high temperature process in a rotary kiln to obtain these light granules. This could save costs during construction as the light granules obtained are said to be a third cheaper than those made from natural raw materials. But so far there is no suitable affordable recycling technology. We see the task of our recycling pilot plant precisely at this interface. Here we want to prove that the technology is available to produce these high-quality recycling materials. On the other hand, of course, the political framework conditions must be created in order to use the recycled material. Even today, we still often encounter tenders from the public sector where the use of recycled materials is excluded. This does not, of course, promote their use. Politics and local authorities are called upon to act. Their aim to intensify educational work and to prevent the favorable landfilling of waste in future by means of a general ordinance. We are working very hard on this at the moment with the federal government and the Bundesrat. This regulation would ensure that at least the material that comes into direct contact with the ground must be of high quality for example, it must be processed. So, why not then use it directly as recycled material in building construction? Encouraging the further development of recycling technology, supporting more agreements within the industry and bringing decision makers together at one table. This is precisely what EFAT does as the world's leading trade fair for environmental technologies. Okay, uh, we have completed uh, this one, fourth model, in that uh, this biomedical waste uh, construction waste, e-waste and uh, uh, this one uh, uh, hazardous waste, okay. Uh, proper management has to be done. We are sources where we get, uh, we have studied the sources where we get the, uh, this all, uh, this one, how to collect it, this biomedical waste, e-waste and uh, hazardous waste and uh, uh, construction waste, how to transport, what are the types of vehicle is used. Okay, very important, what are the types of the vehicle uh, used, what precaution taken, uh, labors, their safety measures and uh, uh, from this lot of uh, opportunity, job opportunity also, okay, lot of business is developing from the waste to recycling or uh, e-waste and a uh, lot of uh, things, precautions uh, taken, how to take the precaution from this, we will understand and uh, disposal also and safety measure also, okay, thank you. Thank you.